All right. Good evening. It's great to be back here again on Wide Awake News. This is Karen Quintostado. Tonight I am filling in for my buddy Dinah, who has some other issues that have come up. Hopefully she will be back next Tuesday and all will be well. She sends her best. And tonight I would really like this to be um, a challenging program for the listeners because we want to get into more about what is truth and also to back it up with some facts. Now, there can be all sorts of truths, but the one I personally believe is most important is that we as a species do not yet fully comprehend that we are in reality unique expressions of the same underlying divine essence which breathes life into all. Here in a three-dimensional world of our co-creating, both individually and collectively, we are responsible for our relationships to the greater care of ourselves, our families, and our world, whose abundance or lack thereof is reflected on a daily basis. When I say that there are many truths, there are, and unfortunately, most of us are not willing to face the bigger truths that threaten us all. That's why it's such a pleasure tonight to speak to a woman who has done such excellent work in exposing the facts, whether or not people want to call these truths or not, but exposing the facts of what is going on behind the scenes, which are so multifaceted and intertwined and connected, it is very difficult to see the bigger picture. In my opinion, we are assaulted on every level imaginable and some we cannot even fathom. And so tonight I'm very happy that my friend Deborah Tavares, who is also a regular contributor to our United We Strike Marathons, is joining me. Her website, one of her major websites, is stopthecrime.net. And I'm so grateful tonight, Deborah Tavares, to have you joining me. Welcome to the program. Well, Karen, thank you so much for having me on this evening. Um, yes, truths. Um, certainly what was difficult for me to realize as a truth um, was our reality that basically occurred when our grandparents uh, were struggling through the uh, concocted Great Depression and the bankruptcy of the United States and the bankers' theft of Americans' gold and silver. And what occurred back then, uh, unbeknownst to our grandparents, is um, at that time that the gold and silver was stolen, uh, we, all of us, including them back then, were collateralized against that debt. And uh, what was collateralized? Well, everything about us, our property, our sweat equity, our children, and they even collateralized our souls. Now, I always wondered what that meant, and we'll get to that in just a bit. But it's most important to understand what the documents tell us. Again, we weren't taught this in school. Uh, I like to compare the new Common Core curriculum that is sweeping our nation right now, where children are not being taught the level of math and science that they were being taught just a few years ago, and they're not learning cursive handwriting anymore, nor are they learning the truth about uh, science. They're being taught in their science classes right now that global warming is a scientific fact and that their contribution to greenhouse gas emissions is going to um, collapse the ecosystem of our planet unless they are individually responsible for reducing their greenhouse gas emissions. And this is putting an untold amount of fear into our children based on fraudulent science and lies. And, of course, we know that global warming or, or climate change is not going to be affected by the amount of reduction of greenhouse gas emissions or CO2. But we're going to get into that, too, in a moment. But what I really want to start with is what people can go to our website to stopthecrime.net. And on the home page, you're going to see right at the top on the right a flag, and it's going to say USA, Inc. And I would refer everyone to spend some time within that reality of our reality. And 
What do I mean in part by some of what you'll discover there? Is we are under and have been since 1933 a perpetual national emergency. And this has been an ongoing ritual since 1933. According to Senate Report 93549, they tell us in that report that once the emergency, the perpetual national emergency is declared, the common law is abolished, the Constitution is abolished, and we fall under the absolute will of government or public policy. We're under a system of public policy. We're under war powers. All the government needs, of course, to continue is to have all of us on their side. They just need our consent. And if public opinion can be kept, they tell us this, in significant degree on the side of the government, statutes and laws and regulations through executive orders can continue to be passed. And the Constitution has no meaning. The Constitution is virtually suspended under this perpetual national emergency that we're all in. And it has been suspended for over 80 years. And we're all under, we're not under any law. The law has been abolished. And the current administration just recently extended the emergency powers, and that was on September 10th of 2013. And I found a very interesting article. We're, we're finding that by executive order, statutes, which are lawless corporate statutes, are occurring. They say on an average of every three hours, we have a new regulation put in place. And it's costing us so much money, and our debt is increasing beyond the ability to pay it back. And it's also increasing the indebtedness of all of our local cities to the extent that we recently saw what happened in Detroit. And I know recently here where I am in Northern California, just two weeks ago, one of the local cities declared a national uh, financial or a, a financial um, uh, concern. I mean, they literally have a state of emergency on concerns of their ability to continue with public services. And so they have talked about extending a measure that increases the tax revenue in their city so that they can keep the fire and police at the minimal levels that they are right now. So I would recommend everybody understand your reality. We have uh, corporations and banks posing as a legitimate government, and they're not. And this is why um, facets of UN Agenda 21, I know many of you know this takedown as Agenda 21, but it's uh, a takedown on many levels. Uh, we're going to talk tonight about the climate action plans. And on our website, stopthecrime.net, on the home page, you can click on the Climate Action Plan link. And I'm going to talk about what these plans intend to do if we allow it and what we must do to not allow ourselves to be continued to be taken down by a corporation that has absolutely no ethics, no morality. It's, they're not, it's not flesh and blood. And these statutes do not serve us. And we must learn how we can sidestep what is happening to our country. We have to throw as many sticks into this wheel that we possibly can. Now, Deborah, when you, yes, say, Karen. you said earlier that uh, in also stealing our souls, and I'd like to get back to that. Um, I know that it's a big subject here, but I also wanted to share from a book called The Age of Napoleon, where Will and Ariel Durant um, were writing about France and in terms of stealing souls. Uh, the quote from the book is, the state, okay, France, supported the church because statesmen generally agreed that the clergy gave them indispensable aid in preserving social order. In their view, the natural inequality of human endowment made inevitable an unequal distribution of wealth. It seemed important for the safety of the possessing classes, that a corps of clerics should be maintained to provide the poor with counsels of peaceful humility 
an expectation of a compensating paradise. I think this highlights exactly what you're talking about in terms of stealing our souls, because if you're counseling people who are poor, who you are stealing from, to be humble and to look for paradise after they die, you can completely control their lives while they're here. What say you? Well, Karen, that's uh, definitely um, a good analogy of what I said. Another analogy, too, is involving the um, advanced technologies uh, and, of course, where uh, those that have the resources and the methodologies and the the sense that they must uh, rule all of us uh, are leading us now into a transhumanism agenda where they are merging humans with machinery with the intention to literally uh, enhance uh, humans, in fact, they, they say that there will be no more wild breeding of humans. It will all be selective, DNA selective. In fact, that was one of the top stories uh, in on the Drudge Report today, how they will start selecting um, uh, humans, fabricating babies. But you can read in uh, the NASA war plan that we have at the top of StopTheCrime.net where they talk about, on page 9, that humans have taken over and vastly shortened evolution, and they plan to direct evolution. Uh, we know that Ray Kurzweil and many of those in uh, Google and in NASA and in many of the corporate uh, structures uh, are looking to live forever. They believe that they have the technology now to extend uh, life indefinitely. And um, they also believe that they should be gods and to prevent us from, uh, from furthering uh, on as humans. So that's another topic uh, completely, but I do want to encourage people to take a look at the one link we have at the top of StopTheCrime.net and it's called No More Humans, and that will give some uh, information about what we're talking about right now. And also, for those that are listening, uh, you can also go to a website that we do have listed as a reference under No More Humans. It's uh, 2045.com. That's the year, 2045.com. And it's basically uh, talking about a new era for for humanity. They say that they need to create new morality standards and new ethics because this is about transferring one's personality to an artificial carrier. That's what transhumanism is about. And they say in there that we are not being responsible for our evolution, and this ties into the NASA war plan. But what I do want to talk about right now is. Um, Really, how are they going to get to that point from where we are now? There are many, many ways. But one way is happening in most of our cities right now. Certainly some cities are further advanced with implementing a climate action plan. They're also called sustainability plans or energy action plans. For those of you that are listening, uh, all you need to do is type in your city and followed by climate action plan and see what pops up. You're going to see things like sustainability, uh, your need to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions. Um, by and large, many of the cities across the country have already adopted these plans. And again, I refer you to StopTheCrime.net to the Climate Action Plan link. Uh, we have a discussion about what these plans mean in great detail. I'm going to go over some of that right now. First of all, what is a climate action plan? Well, it's requiring that you reduce your greenhouse gas emissions. Every plan has different target dates, but the general target dates in the United Nations plan for the United States has three specific target dates, um, 2020, 2035, and 2050, the year 2050. So what does this mean? Well, in my city, for example, we have one of the most stringent climate action plans and target dates in the country. And I'm in Northern California in Sonoma County in the wine country. 
and they are requiring that we reduce our greenhouse gas emissions 25 percent below 1990 levels by the end of 2015. So in just two years, we have to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions 25 percent below 1990 levels. Now let's be very clear. We need a CO2 in order to promote life on the planet. If we eliminate CO2, all life perishes as we know it. So it's important to understand that we have all been deceived by words and by false science. So that's the underlying reality, the, the foundation of which these plans then are built from. So if they're built on scientific fraud, what are they really about? What are they really intending and wanting to do? Yes, Karen? They also, when they make us as individuals the, the problem here for, the, um, for climate change or global warming, global warming's a fraud, but it looks like we're going into an ice age, you notice they never, ever say anything about the abuses of the military-industrial complex and the corporations who are fracking and the genetic engineering of our skies, the geoengineering, so they're always trying to put it on us individually while at the same time excusing themselves from helping us by keeping us so busy with our heads down, again, living to die and to support them and to believe in them and to be humble so we can gain heaven after we die. That the big thing that we are overlooking, the elephant, the monster in the room, is the military-industrial complex. Well, that's, yes, certainly an enormous aspect of what we face because there are technologies that uh, we're not even aware of um, uh, that are used now. Um, of course, we have predator drones. We have um, uh, DEU weapons. Those are directed electromagnetic weapons that are being used. Uh, they can target many miles away. We have satellites that are now used for targeting people. The smart meters in our homes are weaponized frequencies along with cell towers and antennas. Even our uh, cell phones are all weaponized frequencies along with Wi-Fi. All the wireless communication devices are literally uh, involved in shutting down our cells and causing cell death in all humans, in fact, in all living things. And what we really have, too, along with the uh, perpetration of the military-industrial complex, is uh, one of the biggest, biggest polluters because it's one of the silent weapon systems that has been engaged, and that would be the telecom industry because frequencies are bathing the planet and causing a tremendous amount of damage. And one of the things that the Climate Action Plan requires, so if it's based on fraud, what is it intending to do? Well, it's requiring smart meters in all homes. Now, you know that many people in many communities have opted out. They've prevented the smart meters. They're paying fees to not have the smart meters deployed upon them. But it is requiring smart meters. It's also requiring the retrofitting of all inefficient appliances. In other words, if you do not own uh, an Energy Star rated RFID chipped appliance, you're going to be required to replace that. Now, uh, what is happening? This is what they are doing. This was announced by the Department of Energy just a couple of weeks ago. They're training energy um, auditors, energy assessors, to go through, to sweep sweep through our neighborhoods to come into our homes and with a scorecard enter us in a database on the level of um, energy efficiency that our home is. Now, it will be based on many things. Uh, they will not only have equipment that will find any air intrusion or the need to weather strip your doors or to um, replace uh, failed uh, duo pane windows or to install duo pane windows or to add insulation to your walls or to your ceiling. Now, many of these things are good. We don't want to uh, lose uh, the benefit of energy and pay more money if we're, we've got leaks and, and intrusions that are allowing all this energy to escape. But on the same hand, uh, they're uh, requiring replacement of your um, 
your uh, fans, your ceiling fans in your kitchens, uh, your heat and air equipment if it's not Energy Star rated. In fact, all the equipment in your home, anything at all that plugs into a wall, must be Energy Star rated. And what we discovered is all Energy Star products not only has Energy Star uh, partnered with the United Nations or with ICLEI, you can just p punch that in, Energy Star Resources partner Partnering, and you'll see that they've partnered with the United Nations and the EPA. Now, the EPA, again, is a corporate agency that has been set up by the corporations. There's many independent corporations that are imposing all these lawless statutes on us. And on Deborah, the other side of the break, I'll continue. have to hold that. We've got to go to a break. You can come back and finish talking about the Environmental Prostitution Agency. Folks, we will be back after this break. If you have a question for Deborah or myself, 877-342-6673. All right, tonight knocking at the door is Deborah Tavares. And Deborah, I want to share with you a bit of an email that I received today from Judy, who says she loves to hear you. And she says, We've been trying to get Idahoans Against Smart Meter Group organized here in Idaho Falls. We had a screening of Take Back Your Power documentary last fall and have been trying to get it placed in the library for two months now. They won't put it in unless we have the other side represented. Yesterday, they mailed the DVD back to me without any letter of explanation. We told them it shouldn't be up to us to represent the other side, and once the DVD is in the library, others can come forth from the opposite side. Anyway, it's been very frustrating. We even went to the top administrator, and he said we have to work through the one in charge of taking donations. I'm not giving up and will be back. Thank you, Deborah, for all you do. I appreciate you being on the marathons. So... What can we do? What are some other steps, Deborah, when you run into things like this to stop the start meters and to take back our power? Well, uh, what, what I'll get into is what people can do. And I'm going to give a phone number right now because everything that I'm going to be talking about, you can download for free off of stopthecrime.net. In fact, all the documents. But for those that cannot, uh, download uh, and don't have the ability to print off documents off the website, I'm going to give you a phone number of a printing shop that just for the cost of printing and shipping, you can get these documents. And the forms that I'm going to go over in a minute are critical for you to obtain. So the print shop phone number is area code 707-586-9558. Once again, Area code 707-586-9558. Now, I want to go over some more um, assaults and attacks and home invasions that are literally involved with this climate action plan. It is really a coup d'etat in every single city. Now, it's important to first understand that your cities are incorporated. They do not serve you. Corporations only serve and are only in position for profits. So it's first important to understand that your city is incorporated. In fact, you can type in your city and check it on Dun and Bradstreet. They're for profit. That's why you go to your city. Uh, that's why you go to incorporated agencies and you literally uh, leave scratching your head, wondering why they didn't listen to a perfect uh, rebuttal. Well, it's important to understand, I know most of us know about the Delphi technique. That was uh, an invention. It's a weaponized meeting format that was originated by the RAND Corporation. The RAND Corporation. This is a meeting technique for corporations so that it facilitates the corporation's goals. And that is why when you go to meetings and you are trying to present public comment, they tell you no, just write your comments down, uh, write it on a post-it note. In fact, recently when we um, attended a number of climate action workshops, public workshops, uh, they were not interested in public comment at all to the contrary, when we tried to ask questions, we were literally out of format, and they called the police on us. 
and one of the third meetings um, for the public workshops here in Sonoma County, they actually had it in a police department. And the police, of course, were wondering why they were so upset with people that were wanting to come in and just ask questions. Again, this is uh, the Delphi technique. It is uh, intended to give the public the sense that they're being listened to when it's being led by a trained facilitator with a predetermined outcome and, uh, again, for the corporation's goals. So that's what the Delphi technique is really all about. And so what do you do about it? Well, I'm going to go into a little more detail of what the Climate Action Plan wants to do to you in your homes so that then you can download how you can fight against it, how you can put sticks in these wheels. But uh, again, they're requiring smart meters. They're requiring retrofitting of all inefficient appliances, everything, any computers, any devices at all. They're eliminating gas um, lawnmowers. In fact, when you look up Energy Star appliances, they do not make gas equipment or appliances in Energy Star rated uh, equipment. So they're eliminating gas. That's the first thing. In fact, in our climate action plan that is on StopTheCrime.net under the Climate Action Plan link, you can look it up. It's the Santa Rosa Climate Action Plan. It's one of the only plans that I've looked at, and I can't say that other plans may not have it uh, as well, but it says uh, to, um, to stop using gas appliances. And, uh, but what they also say in these plans is that you will be eligible for loans for retrofitting the required assessments, the audits that uh, are occurring in your homes that you pay for, by the way, uh, you can get loans, and they'll be uh, collateralized against your property. In our, our county, the loans are 7% simple interest, anywhere between 10 and 20-year terms. So this is incre increasing everyone's personal debt. You're having to repay back loans. Now, again, not all of this retrofitting would be something that people would not, you know, they may want to do this to create better efficiency in their homes. But, it, again, um, it's a requirement. You have no choice. There will be um, meters, uh, smart meters now put on private wells, also on propane tanks. And um, you will be in a national data bank. They will be using the census to determine how many occupants are in the home. They will be using local building permits to determine the square footage of your home. And then your zip code. And all of that information will be used in conjunction with national averages to get a percentage of efficiency of your home. And you must bring your home up to sustainable um, energy efficiency because these plans, your city, your incorporated city is signing you on to a corporate takedown of corporations moving in, making you install solar in some instances. If you're remodeling, for example, more than 50% of your home is being remodeled, you will be required to install solar here in our city. All new construction is to be designed and built to net zero energy. That's not even really possible. But that, that is now in the new uh, Cal Green laws that are taking effect here in California. I can tell you that also what these plans uh, are uh, requiring is uh, intense construction within these urban or city growth boundaries. So you need to find out, you need to go down to your planning department and find out your city's urban growth boundary. Find out if you are inside of that boundary or outside. If you're outside of that boundary, like many people I know, uh, you are in an area that they are now defining as sprawl and unsustainable. So what does that mean? Well, that means that you will not get permits to add on to your homes, uh, to, um, to uh, have road improvements, in other words, maintenance done to your roads, because it's considered sprawl. Uh, they're also in the Iowa plans that I looked at. Every, every state or every city has a pie chart in these plans, 
and they will identify in your area what is their uh, target. The the um, for example, here in Sonoma County, they're identifying transportation as being the most um, inefficient and the highest expense of greenhouse gas emissions. So they want us um, inside these city growth boundaries to reduce our driving. Uh, they say if you are in the country, again, as I said, that's sprawl and unsustainable because you're using too much gas to drive out to where you live. So the target here in my city is transportation. The next item is new construction. Then it's agriculture. Now, agriculture is in the largest there, pipe. Deborah, again, we, we got the music. I'm, I'm sorry to stop you there. Uh, folks, we will be back after this. Again, if you have a question for Deborah, 877-342-6673. We'll be back after these messages. Well, there is definitely change out there, and, and Deborah, again, when I think about stealing our soul, it makes me aware of the fact that we've been trained to think that our worth is outside of ourselves, and instead of what we can bring to the table and the joy of co-creating, we are instead forced into these systems that completely abuse us and keep us pacified and humble so that we can expect rewards after we die. But we need to bust a move now. We need to unite and understand why are we living for someone else or for ourselves. And when we That's finally exactly right. embrace good stewardship uh, of our world and ourselves, our world will change. That's right. And right now I would really like to have everyone go to the Climate Action Plan link on StopTheCrime.net. And at the very top of that page, Climate Action Plan page, you will see a moving scroll pass by. And if you click on the second button to the left, you'll see a notice to government employees. It's a questionnaire. Very, very important to download this questionnaire because it can be presented to any corporate government employee that enters your property for any purpose. And this form is a standalone questionnaire, so it does not require an explanation. And uh, other than to say, I need this information completed before I can let you in or on my property. And this, of course, applies whether you rent, you lease, or, you're, uh, or you own your property. And you just hand this questionnaire to the government employee for them to answer. And I will tell you that uh, this is a must download. It's another stick in the spokes. But I, I'm going to go over what you can expect and what they want to do with these energy or climate action plans. They're going to be uh, using students uh, and other volunteers from other organizations like the Sierra Club, et cetera, to go through your community and uh, and create surveys of, say, for example, how many lights are left on at night. And that will be reported as an infraction and abuse of energy. Also, they will be uh, creating uh, idling, vehicle idling laws. Uh, the average uh, one I've seen in many of the plans I've looked at is you cannot exceed idling your vehicle more than five minutes or you will get a stiff fine. Now in the Pittsburgh Climate Action Plan, they want to reduce car idling down to 20 seconds. 20 seconds. That means they just don't want any vehicles at all with inside their city limits. But what we find now with the new green jobs for our new green economy are uh, enforcement teams that are going to be attempting to implement these, these lawless corporate statutes. This is what our new green jobs are really all about. And uh, beyond those um, desires in the plans, again, they are identifying areas outside of the cities as sprawl, and so they're saying that agriculture must be eliminated. Any any cattle, any uh, animals being raised, they emit too much methane, they emit too high 
greenhouse gas emissions, and they're saying that they want to have meatless, uh, some, some climate action plans say a meatless Monday, a meatless Thursday. They even talk about not driving on certain days of the week to start out with so that people will become accustomed to riding their bicycles. For example, they'll say car-free Friday programs, but that will uh, be increased significantly in scale, they say, over time. Uh, they talk about uh, the need to identify larger energy users and target them. So what I can say is this is implementing corporate statutes for corporate gain. This is massive corporate profiteering over collapsing all local authority in our cities, which are, are, are virtually not existing now because as we have a large federal uh, secret shadow government, we also have city secret shadow governments in the, with the fact that they are all incorporated. So I would urge everybody to read this book. It's a free download. You can also purchase it as well from the print shop and get it in a book format. It's entitled The Great American Adventure, Secrets of America. And what you will discover and what you know, and also it, it sits on top of the most important 44 pages anyone can read, and that's called The Silent Weapons, Quiet Wars uh, Policy. And that's a free download as well. I would recommend Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars and The Great American Adventure by retired Judge Dale. And you will understand when you read these documents that the federal and state governments are not real, that they are privately owned corporations called governments. And the judges are privately employed administrators called judges. The law is nothing more than corporate regulations called statutes. And that laws are created by these government and corporations. They're private corporate regulations called public law, and they're not. In fact, um, also what is important, and you said this at the beginning of the show, Karen, uh, geoengineering or weather modification is the deliberate large-scale manipulation of the Earth's climate. And these climate action plans say these must be immediately implemented to stop some of the significant storms, droughts, and weather events that we are experiencing when, in fact, they're being deliberately created. And these climate action plans are really a cover for what they tell us in the plans are the human effects if we don't implement the need to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. They're telling us there will be increased heat-related deaths and illnesses. There will be increased chronic health conditions, respiratory illnesses, waterborne illnesses, foodborne illnesses, stress-related disorders, increased mental health impacts. These are in the plans. Increased hunger, decreased nutrition. Why? Because we're going to have higher... The you're trying to reach is currently on a... I, Karen, are you there? Hello? Hello? Okay, it looks like we had a little bit of sound issues there. I know that when people really start speaking truth in terms of facts, sometimes this happens, and a lot of times this happens with Skype, which is owned by Bill Gates. Seems like I'm hearing a lot of uh, feedback right now. Deborah Chavaris is not able to get back on. We have a few minutes left, so Karen, maybe can Brett. Can you hear me? Ah, yes, good. Okay, Deborah. Okay, you got a I'm here, more and I was just going over before the show was interrupted what the climate action plans are saying it will cause. And most importantly, it's important to understand they're telling us if we do not re reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, which is again phony, false science that we will have increased deaths due to storms and weather-related droughts and floods and weather pattern changes. And, of course, we know that they control the weather. In fact, on StopTheCrime.net, under the Climate Action Plan link, we discovered on the Harvard Kennedy School Belfer website that they were requesting uh, applications 
uh, for international um, uh, policies, for global policies on weather manipulation. They said geoengineering is the deliberate large-scale manipulation of the Earth's climate, and they needed to get together and create global policies because they said it appears that some individual states could use weather manipulation tools to alter the global climate unilaterally. So, they also, uh, in, their, in their own documents, they talk about using weather as a force multiplier, and you can find that out. There are links to that on unitedwestrike.com, and there are links to incredible information right from their own words. These are the papers, the legitimate government papers on Deborah's site, Stop the Crime. And I think, Deborah, since we only have a minute or two left, one of the big things that I would like people to really understand is that their value is intrinsic. It's born inside of them, and it's what they can bring to the table creatively in good stewardship of themselves and their world. What do you think about that? Well, uh, of course, uh, Karen, I, I want to throw sticks in this monster, and I think by recognizing uh, some of the aspects of our reality and the government, uh, that is a corporate uh, facilitator of, of lawless statutes, we, we must not consent. And with knowledge, Agreed. we are not as e easily deceived. And that's what I think about that, because I think that uh, we have been enslaved by lack of knowledge and enslaved by media propaganda and enslaved by um, a lack of education. In fact, they say in the silent weapons document, that we will be enslaved by lack of education, and that's the intention. And being uh, distracted by things of no real importance. So I would go to StopTheCrime.net, read Silent Weapons, Quiet Wars, take a look on the home page of the documents under USA Inc. so that you can understand the reality of our government. We do not have a representative government, because certainly if we did, we would not be being poisoned by our air, water, and food supply and just about everything else that we can consume. They want to increase vaccinations. They want to bring GMO into our food supply, largely because this, of course, as we know, Karen, this is a soft kill method. And uh, that is our reality. If we do not understand what tools we have at our disposal, to do everything we can to throw, throw sticks in these spokes. And to reclaim our morality, to understand that we have a mass murderer who sits in the highest office in this country who can condemn people with an accusation and someone can send a drone and they kill 50 people. That's mass murder. It doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you are on. That is mass murder. It's not a right or left issue. It's a morality issue that we're destroying our planet and our world until we do unite and we stand as one. Deborah, it is always a pleasure to speak to you because you are so knowledgeable about so many of these issues that we face. Um, and I also want to commend you on your courage because I get to the point where I, I have to step back for a couple of days. I don't want to learn anything more, you know, <laughs> do my thing on a different level. But tell us again, Deborah, where we can get you and when is your next radio appearance? So. Yeah, I, I have many radio appearances uh, on StopTheCrime.net. I would encourage everybody to listen to the ones that we have um, uploaded on YouTube uh, to understand more of what you hear me talking about today. Go to StopTheCrime.net. Spend some time there. We have lots of links and other websites as well. Karen, thank you so much for having me on your program today. Oh, thank you. And this is Wide Awake News. Charlie McGrath will be here tomorrow. Dinah will be here next week. Eric will be here on Thursday. Get set for an archive on Friday. Enjoy your week, folks. Learn about how you two can stop the crime. And, Deborah, you may want to check your link. I'm hearing that your uh, climate action plan is blocked and has stopped working. So they're out to get you. They're out to get us all. Okay, well, I will check on that. Everybody stay with it and get back to it and try it. We'll make certain that that is available for you. Thank you. All right. Good night, all. You have